tonight live streaming we're going to paint step by step this adorable funny face cow in acrylic on canvas for beginners i'm going to fully explain everything i'm going to show you everything you need to know i'm going to do that with the help of my husband john hello that will be the disembodied voice that you will enjoy during this live stream <laughs> and his lovely lovely voice will be reading the chat so if you have a question during the live stream you can ask that here and you might get your question asked on air he'll also be switching uh, cameras that zoom so that you can see every part of the step-by-step -step process. There is also a free traceable on our website, so you don't have to draw, and I'll be demonstrating how to use that today. So if you're not ready to draw, that's okay, we've got you. Um, also, uh, a few days after the show, there is a step-by-step -step written out instruction of this video that will match the timestamps. That's right, we chapter, book, timestamp these videos as well. And we do all this because what it allows you to do as a student is find your place easily again, take this process and steps, really see what's happening and how it's happening. I don't know why I saw the focus card out. Oh my gosh, I think that's just out of like, I don't <laughs> even see it anymore. It's like focus card, some things are happening with the focus card. So, um, <laughs> so basically that's gonna let you find your way easier. So I, I really think we give the most free access, free materials to beginners out there that you can have. And the purpose of this is to help you guys get a great painting. Because mm -hmm. it'll be fun to watch me paint. I'm going to paint a beautiful cow. It's going to be, there's going to be weird moments. There's going to be fun moments. We're going to make silly comments and all that will be wonderful. But the most wonderful thing is the part where you feel successful in your painting. Ooh. Now. Are we going to paint till the cows come home? Oh, all the cows. Moo, moo. Moo, moo, moo. They got to see them on the, on the Facebook. We got to see all the painting. Okay. Sorry, Desert man. cow. Moo! <laughs> There's no food in the desert. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the materials. Now, all the colors that I potentially use are down in the description, but I'm going to start out using phthalo green and burnt sienna, and I'm going to paint this entire surface with that. I have an 8x8 eight eight canvas here. I'm going to be using water and regular brushes for acrylic. I'll tell you each of the tools as I'm using them. Um, if you have any questions again about any of this, please feel like you can ask if, even if it doesn't make it on the show, the moderators will share a video with you that likely answers that question. Cause I've been teaching to beginners for a few years now. Hmm. So I'm kinda, I think I'm kind of good at it. You teach people. I, ho I hope I'm kind of good at it. I do try to take the feedback and turn and turn those into better, better lessons. And I think since you know that we're doing an eight by eight canvas and we were doing phthalo green and burnt sienna paint, and we're going to be starting out. Um, this is a one inch cutter brush. It looks a lot like a house paint brush, right? It's like, uh, I think that this actually, is, this is a very it. fancy version of a house paint brush, which yes, you could. Purdy still calls it a one inch cutter. Yeah. You could use Purdy's one inch cutter. Uh, this particular one happens to be a chunking hog inner least <laughs> brush, <laughs> which fancy. is just a super fancy, fancy way of saying all the little hog bristles curve in and we pick them by hand and they come from the pig's back. But you could use a synthetic house brush. My point is I will tell you what I'm using, but please, if this is your first class and you hear nothing else from me, even if you're about to click away, hear this one thing. There's always another tool. There's always another paint brand. There's always something else that will work as well in art. There are often many options. So I'll tell you what I'm using so as not to be tricksy, but there's a good chance you have something that's close or similar that is working well at home. And if there isn't, talk to me. I will tell you all the good stuff that I know after years and decades and all this time in the art world. Mm. Sound good? What about step one? Do I? No. Step one. You're going to ask me to be prepared. Step one, painting in the background. Step one of Moo Cow. And we do oh, in our, now oh my, my daughter calls them grass puppies. There we go. That's the That's order I wanted. my daughter's name for them. Grass I puppies? call them, yeah, Honey calls them grass puppies. That's true, she does. I call them Moo Cows. I should have probably called it grass puppies. It's so much cuter. Next cow we paint is a grass puppy. You got it. It will confuse everyone except you guys who saw this video. Okay, so we're going to take our brush and we're going to get it slightly wet. Because we are working with a hog bristle, the brush will hold a lot more water than synthetic. So I just want to make sure that I have that under control. And I will sometimes wipe that brush out on a towel. Again, that's about controlling the amount of mo moisture I have on the brush. If you're really new to painting acrylic, 
that's one of the first challenges you guys really have is controlling how much water is or is not on the brush and whether or not your paint is or is not still wet. Doesn't seem that important, but when you're painting something that only blends when it's wet, <laughs> mm. right, or is only dry brushable when it's dry, these things are all important. Now, you can paint the edges of your canvas. Uh, a lot of people do. And that is okay. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing right with it. It's just a preference or a choice. And you should make yourself happy in your own painted home, your own private sip and paint studio, right? Yes. Who knows what you're sipping? I'm sipping coffee as uh, the usual. Oh, coffee is very nice. I'm a coffee person. I have a serious coffee pot now thanks to my mother. It's true, you do. She just, she got us basically the machine that is at the coffee house. <laughs> she was like, no, all the coffee is yours. And so you need a degree to make the coffee pot go is what we have. And everybody has a formula. And then there's lots of conversations about the formula. Are you a 321 or a 322? See, you don't know because you don't have the coffee pot degree. But what I've done is distracted you while you're painting your canvas screen. Which is my other job, I feel. It's very brushy. It's very brushy. And let's talk about that. This is a this is a very thick acrylic colored ground. Traditionally, a ground is a very thin, washy run of color, but that kind of started in oils, and acrylic is a very different medium. Um, so a lot of artists weren't doing washes because they believed it caused underbinding until Golden did a big study and said some paint doesn't underbind. So now there's not a clear answer on that issue at all. So for the purposes of our mental health, let's just call this an acrylic ground. Hmm. And I will, I'll handle the art technical arguments with artists and you guys just go, acrylic ground, got it. <laughs> got because, it. you know, at some point it's just, you get it, you know what it is. It's a green solid color on your canvas. Now that needs to dry for the next step, which will be transferring image on and I'll talk to you about the ways that you can do that. I rinsed my brush out and I'm going to put it to the side. I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer. Okay. John's going to talk to you about temperature and paint because he's been doing that for seven years. Ooh. And he should get a new conversation. Okay. How's it going? Do it. And if you're here for the first time, let me ask you to subscribe and ring the bell and then get the all button. And if you would like to get notified via our text messaging system we have one of those and to be part of that all you got to do is send the art sherpa to the number 33222 and you too can be a part of that oh wait i'm i'm muted we did oh you're, i'm you're, muted you were muted now you're unmuted they can't know what i just said no it was so know. good but i want to tell them it's a secret until next break until, no. we just spun up a new channel you should have waited for the next break. No, because they're going to, you know, uh, half the people figured out, oh, my gosh, the woman has just gotten to the green now. All the other art YouTube videos are 20 minutes and have piano music. And that's what I was looking for. I didn't know you were going to teach me how to paint. If I wanted to relax know, after a hard day's work. So what I would suggest is if you would like to come here and learn to paint, that's what you do. And when you want to go there and watch someone paint, go watch someone paint. Yes. But those are but different But we are things. not the piano music. We are not to teach paint. you paint. We are learn paint. We are learn paint. Both are good things. Both are very good things. Different things, but good things. Let's do step two and take a picture of this. Step two. Oh, yeah. You did you step to it? Up there. Fine. I think you already did, but. <gasps> no, I don't think so. We're live. So wait. Tell them what you're going to do in step two. So step two, we are going to use a product called Serral Paper and a traceable. Um, so this is something you can get from my website and print it out. It's currently in its 8x8 size. And I give you guys a little black bar around it so you can line it up on these square canvases easier. Huh? Get in there. And here is a product called Serral Paper. S-A-R-A-L. It is in the description below with an affiliate link on that one just so you can find it again. You can buy it from anywhere. And one side is very deeply yellow, and one side is softly yellow. This is the side that's going to be to the back of our traceable, and we're going to tape both of these down on the canvas, trace over these lines, and that's going to create a transfer. Now, if you have not painted before, you're not familiar with art, you may come with the, the preconception that tracing is cheating, because sometimes when we're in grade school, which is, of course, the font of all knowledge, 
But sometimes when we're in grade school, uh, as kids, we feel that freehand is better and that tracing is cheating because we're trying to learn things, right? That's what we're knowing, and that's why we feel that way. Um, but actually, even the Renaissance masters use this method of transfer. There are a plethora of reasons why fine artists do it, and none of them are to cheat. It is really always about uh, creating a uh, process in your – yes, baby. Raheel wants to know what Hi, Raheel. Name. How are you doing, sweetie? What's the name of the new channel? <gasps> okay. Uh, I just named it today, How to Watercolor Live with the Art Sherpa. So it's just like this. Again, no piano. <laughs> just like this. Step-by-step -step watercolor lessons. And I, I'm, you know, we're going to finish up our little wave thing that we're doing over on Facebook. But I'm going to also do some simpler watercolors that are, you know, that's probably where I'll drop the BTS stuff. And you never know. Maybe Clone High. I don't know. Weird things that I could do. Plus beautiful, simple watercolors. So you can what? learn how to watercolor. You're going to do a Mighty Boosh painting? Would you like one? <laughs> I'll do one. No one's going to watch it, but I'll do it. No one will watch it. Only John watches the Mighty Boosh. And me with him because I owe him for Wanda. I have All right, Mr. Susan. So you're going to take time to do the choosing. You're going to take your transfer paper and we're going to use, I'm going to use artist tape okay. here, which is a low tack tape. You can use any low tack tape. I just want to be able to, you can use these serial pieces of paper almost indefinitely. I mean, you can use them many, many times. So once you cut one, it could be used 20, 30 times. So you don't want the tape to tear it up too much so you can reuse it. So I'm going to tape that down on two sides. I am so glad Raheel was here today. I'm cow. so sorry I missed you guys over the weekend. I was not feeling great. It was not my weekend. I think the time change and a incredible case of insomnia, and uh, I had just gotten the flu shot, which really in of itself wasn't that bad, but I had just gotten the COVID shot, and uh, I think it all just came together and said, you need to lay down now. You lay down and talk to no one now. So I did. I laid down right now. All right, so we're going to trace. I like to uh, use a sharp instrument. You can use a colored pencil or a jelly pen so you have an easier time knowing where your lines are, knowing where you've been, especially if you're going to use a transfer multiples of times, which is actually one of the reasons that uh, artists would make these. Some of your favorite paintings have many, many reditions of them because those artists use traceables, but back in the day, they called them cartoons. Now you learned an art school thing. So I should give, I should be like titling my things. Learn from professional artists who know things. You just get to know things. All right, so you can see that we're going around. My little ear is going off the surface a bit. Now you really only need a few structural lines on something like this. And I'm going to do that thing that turns off my noise wherever I can find it. I was it. wondering about that. I don't even know where it is. Where's the noise thing? I was wondering if it was me or you. No, it's me, but I don't okay. know where my noise button is. It's on the side. You have a volume button you turn it up and down with? Yeah. But it's all the way down. Huh. Well, let's try it again. Now it also is wanting to know if Siri wants something. <laughs> Don't. That little program is so invasive. She's just always. And I've lost my reference. Ta -da! Ta -da! Technology. It's a channel we don't have. <laughs> John could have a technology channel, but I could not. I would. I would not. You know I would be like, did you turn it on and off? My advice Did you is, leave it off for at least 30 seconds? See, after doing a whole lot of tech support in my life... You don't want to do it I, ever I again. People, you just buy an Apple. It will just work. And you Apple. won't have to do anything. <laughs> it's so funny. My dad's kind of a, a, a technophile. And so my, my dad and my husband were talking. And you can see when we leave, we have a very faint line drawing. It's very there. faint. Very faint. Now, I'm going to... Put this in with some chalk so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay. Because why not? See? That You're may have be to me. figure it out. I think I'm over here. Hold on. It's not oh, you. I'm going to turn it all the way over here. I think it is. I bet you it's my volume. It's not you. You don't think so? I think it's mine. 
Because little notifications are coming. Yeah, I think that we, well, that's because we have so many computers tied to the same communication <laughs> systems. So, okay. <laughs> back Mod to chat. The, back to the, the, the Ferdinand cow at hand. The Ferdinand cow at hand. That's what we're working on. Oh, I know. Such a sweet cow. I mean, seriously, please, I, I'll tell you what. I forgot to look up if sunflowers are bad for cows. And I should have because the internet huh. is going to be like, did you know that sunflowers are bad for cows and you are painting a cow in certain danger? Because that's cow. how the internet is. That's definitely something not me dinging. <laughs> the man and the fat raccoons with all the angry uh, raccoon enthusiasts. <laughs> Check it out. I think he and the raccoons have worked it out, though. I have to wait. What are you looking for? It's all the way down. Well, I, it was, maybe when I thought I was turning it down, I was turning it up. See, you don't know everything. No. You don't know everything. I knew that. I think it's because I was in Skype. Okay. Is this show live? Yes, it is. All right. So we can put up step three because once we have transferred the image on here, we can go on to painting in the background some flowers and start creating this adorable little cow. I am keeping this at a very chill pace because I feel like, one, I got to keep it chill given the weight that I've had, and two, uh, given everything going on in the world, I feel like we need a minute to chill out. I can't even turn on the TV without being just absolutely freaked out to my core. <clears throat> I would say, hey, guys, be nice to each other, but I know you guys are nice to each other. So, And the people who aren't being nice sadly are not watching my show because I can help them. Be nicer. Be nicer. We can help you find your inner artist niceness. Yeah, give you another outlet. Just paint a for little. your feelings. Just paint a little bit. Just paint. So I'm going to add some more colors. Some more. So I'm going to add some cat yellow mediums. Mmm. You are medium cat yellow. Mm. You are not deep. Yeah. You are not light. You are in the middle. Am I a little too excited about that? Probably. Probably I am. Really? These three are pretty good together. I will add a smidgers. Smidgers. I've had right over here. Because sometimes it's nice to get in there into the orange and browns. And I'll put out some white and black. And we may not need to go beyond these colors, but we'll see. We teach color mixing too. If you're waiting on the color mixing mini book, it is coming. I will try to get it out by the beginning of acrylic April so that you have it ready. All right, there you go. So what we have out is Mars Black, Cad Yellow Medium, Phthalo Green, Burnt Sienna, Cad Red Medium, and Titanium White. Now, at first, we're going to just kind of brush out, I'll take this. This is a number eight cat's tongue, which is just a pointed filbert. This one's a little more rounded than the traditional ones. Um, but listen, you could use a filbert or a bright. For this part, the brush is not that urgent or specific sometimes it is but for this one okay. it is not i take no. a little green and a little brown and we're gonna make the basic green for everything so cinnamon mm -hmm. uh and and sema and sema and 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 selma maybe nah and selma and selma she would like to know if this is really live or was this pre-recorded and we're just pretending it's live we okay so um all right. If you watch both of us, you're not allowed to get mad at me because you know this is true. That's my mother. <laughs> but only when she's on a cruise, but she's not currently. Um, no, we, uh, on Acrylic April, the lessons uh, are pre-recorded and then are premiered so we can all chat live. And then in those lessons, I go into that chat to talk to you guys to answer questions. We also have a fully live pre-show that we're going to be doing from Facebook the night before each class. Um, those are the only ones that we really do like that. Everything else that's live is just pure live. And we 
try we don't mix up those labels because we're not trying to confuse anybody or mess with you guys in any way so hopefully that real-time question was helpful ah you know but yeah no this is really live almost all of my classes and including the upcoming watercolor classes on the new channel they're just live um, if they're recorded drop you'll be able to definitely tell and I do premieres when I feel like you guys being in a live chat with me and each other will benefit the outcome of your lesson. What you see me doing here is I'll get a little bit of my cad yellow over to my burnt sienna and phthalo green mixture. And I'm mixing slightly lighter and darker values of that. When I want to lighten the color, I add a little more cad yellow. When I want to darken the color, I add a little more green. And that's how I'm getting this sort of out of focus, uh, far away little green patchwork that I'm working on here, which you gotta love. I'm coming delicately around my pre-drawn in image and we're doing that not because we have to be this precious about it because this is acrylic so you don't, but just so we have an idea of where objects are. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in image and uh, lose yourself to the lines and to the content the subject to the moment you get to mm -hmm. painting i don't know if you've ever got to painting and realize that you just went crazy with some part of the painting where you're like they get to be all branch right <laughs> you heard a thing where you're like you started to do some grass and all of a sudden it was all grass and you're like i said all grass because you were just having fun maybe it was a day you needed to do an old grass painting sometimes we have those what you're seeing me do here is bring my brushwork around and make it random so that it feels like a distant field, right? Because the field mm. doesn't make patterns unless the farmer's been out there mowing it. Yeah. Right? Which they don't really do with sunflowers. I feel like this is a crop that they let a cow into for a picture. <laughs> and the cow was like, I don't know how I lucked out. Or, but this or, is moving. I, I should have come up with a better joke. John's a funny one. I am not. He is. And what's funny is he'll be like, you're so like so much the straight one that you don't even know that I'm joking with you. Because, you know, in comedy, there's the okay, there's the straight man. And then what is the other person? Uh, the comedian. <laughs> I don't know. The funny one. And so, um, yeah, that's me. Not the funny one. As really evidenced by that gruesomely challenging description of comedy. Joker, maybe I could be the Joker. Oh, I'm definitely Batman to the Joker. Or the fool. I could be the fool. No, I want to be I want to be like Harley Quinn or Ivy though. I don't want to be and I'm definitely not. But I want to be. I want to be. All right. So we have that there. Let's also carry this nice patterning around because it's going to serve us for later on. Shall we? Come in with a little darker green around the cow. You know, we've got this beautiful sunflower we're going to put there that's up close and very specific. But if we paint all this in now, and I'll bring this in around the mouth and the ear, it's going to just make a more beautiful finished painting. Look like an oil painting. I don't need to go that far into her. And I can still add some of the yellow into the burnt sienna and phthalo green mixture. I could do that. So I will. The greens must go in. The greens must go in. So, uh, do any of you guys watch YouTube outside of us? Like, just general YouTube? Hmm. John kind of does, but he watches weird stuff like music theory. But he doesn't like watch YouTube proper. What does that even mean? Well, there's a show. Uh, do you remember uh, uh, H3H3? Yeah. Okay, so they spun off to a show, which I honestly it exploded my brain when I saw it, with a YouTuber named Trisha Paytos, who is not my favorite. Just going to be really honest right now. This is some things that don't, I think, are not nice, necessarily kind-hearted. Okay. Um. And so they have this show, which is kind of like, you know, uh, two different opinions and we argue stuff out, Joe. 
Mm-hmm. And they have literally just cracked cases. They're like, I wouldn't even go on that show for anything. Huh. If if you think back in the day there was this show, Maury Povich, and if you came on Maury Povich, oh, you're, you were you're the father. Just don't go on the show. <laughs> don't go on the show. If you, you know. is, that, is this the modern version of that? It is, but they're so much better at it. And so there's a really kind of not fun, draw, a really not fun case going on right now um, with a criminal aspect to it. And um, the people were trying to claim that they weren't there and that this reporter was like bad mouthing them and trying to make money. And these two like had photographic evidence. I don't know where they got from where that was like showing people's watches about when they were there. And it it was like, it was like Perry Mason, but on YouTube. And I'm like, man, am I going to have to start watching this show? Cause this was really exciting. Man. They like cracked the case. Huh? And, 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 and I'm not going to say it was like Trisha like sussing it out. Cause let's, it wasn't, but <laughs> we know who it was, but it was still just amazing. Amazing. Mm. Uh, just so that is how we filled in the time painting in all of these little random greens. And now we're ready to put up the next step. Are we, we going to dry it, but we're going to put up the next step. Okay. And well, go well, you dry it, then I'll put up the next. All thing. right, if you want that, that then we'll do more that. More organized. We're I gonna. Think. Are we? I think it would be more organized. So, if we dry it, then you don't have to come in and be sitting through the step while we're drying. You can be like, "Oh, we just got right to it." And when she comes back, she'll tell you what we do in the next step when I push the button to make the next step thing come up. Because then we're not like you know, doing the things in the order and making sense. But yeah. It's a cow in a muddled field of green. And that's what you should be doing. That's where you should be in your process. So, yay! Mm. Let's see. I guess don't use heat. I can always tell you about that. You should know that by now because I say it almost every time we go live. Also, if you check our website, theartsherpa.com, you'll find out a whole bunch of cool stuff there. And now, because she's back, I'll give her a From step. out of space. Let's change our water. Okay. I'm going to do it very easily with a swaparoo because I'm prepared. But you might not have known we were doing that. So you can run to your uh, water disposal system and uh, dispose of water how you dispose of water. Environmentally consciously, right? I'm not in your home. You do you. I'm not in charge of anyone. Now for the next part, we did that whole last step with the cat's tongue. For this next part, we're going to do a number four round. Now, something you should understand. This is an Art Sherpa number four round. Not all number fours on a long handle brush across any line are this size. They're all kinds of sizes. Uh, We're working on creating a brush guide that is beyond the brand and beyond this crazy labeling so that you you can, if you're painting with me, know what I'm doing. It will not explain any other madness. It just explains my madness. Um, So we're working on that right now. We're going to get that brush wet, and we're going to put in some of these distant little sunflowers, which is going to start out in a real interesting way. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and my red, and I'm going to mix a beautiful orange. Orange. Not a great orange. And then we're going to add a titch of green to it. What? I know. Mm. You're like, but doesn't that make brown? I watched that video. It will if we take it so far. But if you'll notice, these little uh, wonderful bits of flowers here have kind of this color out in the field. And so we're going to be making little, little comma marks. These are little comma marks. They'll be uh, different sizes and focuses sometimes it's fun to put them different places one that comes right behind the head here that was a funny one we don't have to do everything exactly as we see it in the um, references because the references are guides for lighting and where things are just generally. But as artists, we should make decisions like if if an area is too busy or, you know, 
if something was sticking out in a place we didn't enjoy, well, we should do something about that. Now I'm going to rinse out, right? and I'm going to do a, a, some more green into this color a little bit, and we're going to take some of these distant ones mm. and pull them into the greens a bit so they're still blended. See how I'm making very random shapes? This is another way to take things out of focus. I could blend them out of focus, or I can make marks that are like camouflage and help them be in less focus. I can even come and get a few of these pieces, some of that orange color, into my brush. We'll bring these around here and there, here and there and everywhere. We think it will be of use to us because, again, we're creating a sense of a slightly far away field with sunflowers. And that is always sort of fun. I'm going to bring a little more yellow into the mix over here. And you see me rolling my brush, that's to get a good load going. It's always a good idea to have just a few pops of hard color. You know, you've got on there and see that's a little bit lighter, create some focus. Pull a little yellow out. And again, a titch of red, just to take it a little warmer, in other words, more towards the red. And we're going to make little brush strokes. These represent petals. Hmm. So Jalen asks, so if I'm painting and I mess up, what am I supposed to do? You dry it and paint over it. This is acrylic. So it's completely, completely fixable to fix anything in painting. Um, usually what happens to you guys when you're trying to fix uh, what you feel is a boo-boo, oftentimes your stuff, you're not boo-booing as mad, bad, badly as you guys feel, um, is that you try to fix it while the paint is wet and so the paint keeps moving and blending and not lifting. But if you dry it, then you can paint a background color and start over. One of the many reasons that people quite appreciate acrylic paint. And now that changes depending on the mistake. Like, uh, you know, you have to be like, what kind of mistake did one make? Is it a mistake that needed fixing? Those, are, those can be kind of hard things to know. We're adding little marks of yellow around here. And when, when the marks are kind of far away, that helps them, and I'm doing them very light and loose, that helps them feel more distant. Distant like we all feel after a year of quarantine. So distant. That's so nice. I like the little petals as they kind of emerge from the green. Yeah, they're just sort of showing up, and they're, and they're vibrant, and they're playful. Everything about this was so playful. It was such a treasure, such a find. Um, I was so glad to get the license on it because it was just, it's like, what fun. Where you see me make these sort of blobby shapes, and that can be hard for you when you're new to painting. I'm very confident in my blobby shapes. I know my blobby shapes are beautiful, but if you're really new to painting, how would you know if your blobby shape is beautiful? So what I would say is if you can reserve judgment and uh, give yourself just a little bit of wiggle room to get to know your blobs and not be too judgmental of them, you may find that you have a better blob than you think. Ah, it's looking quite fun and lovely. And get a little white into there. Add a little highlight to that one. See, that pulls that one forward. All right. Last part of this that we're really going to look at is we're going to take a bunch of the yellow into our green mixture, which was our phthalo green and our burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. This is going to make a pretty bright green. Mm 
And we're going to make some heads that are kind of maybe pulling away from us a little bit, right? Going to layer some of those greens in. Break some of that up. Play with it. It's hard to do to trust your play, to trust your sense of play. You're probably doing better than you think. You can bring some kind of focused little stems down a few places out here. You don't want to pull too much focus into that because mm -hmm. then you have to start uh, pulling all your focus in, right? Don't pull your focus. Yeah. Well, wherever you start making things sharp and detailed, that moves that object forward and more into clarity. And if you start putting things into clarity in the distant background, everything has to be into clarity or only that is in clarity. And then this has to become ever fuzzier. So you have to make these big decisions, which are great when you've been painting for a bit, but maybe not as much fun when you're, Kind of starting out. I'm going to get a little of my yellow over mm. to my pure phthalo green, and I'm going to. Good news from Ruth. Good news from Ruth. Hi, Ruth. How are you doing? She says, Google says sunflower is safe for cows to eat. God, that's real. Thank you, Ruth. That, that, that's better. <laughs> I meant to look that up today, and then I got into acrylic April prep again, and, um, you know, we were getting the newsletter out, and then. I wanted to uh, get the, stand, the watercolor channel started. So that was ready to go for the live on this Wednesday. And then I've got Acrylic April and the patrons are previewing the mini books, the videos and all that stuff just to make sure that, you know, they're ready for you guys. They're making sure. Let's add a little yellow to that green there. We're going to just keep putting these little dabs of, uh, they're almost like leaves, aren't they? different values of green. I can go pure green and these are quite dark. Now those little touch pull strokes, this is what we refer to as a little touch pull stroke. We touch and pull with just the green. There we go. That is a nice little sort of out of focus, fun background. Oh, fun painterly. It's just, so, a, it's about a little cow back. Now, it's you about need, a little cow. Yeah. This is the story of a cow in a field. The story of a very happy cow eating or, a very sunflower. This is a, a, a story of a bunch of upset sunflowers. <laughs> or an upset farmer. Could be an upset farmer. But I imagine that it's a farmer who loves his cow and gave this cow a treat, a special day. Plants versus zombies yeah. did not have this level. Did not have this level. All right. Okay. You need step. To, you need a step. I need a step. All right. I got to stop step distracting. It's okay. All right. So again, if you're looking for an area of the video, we're going to timestamp this at the end of this video. It's going to match the mini book. The mini book chapters are free to download. And so you can go by the website file section. And often I put these in the video pages. And I'll announce it like as soon as it's done. And we also announce them in the newsletters. So you can find those resources too. And they make, they make all the difference in your guys' results. It's completely worth it. So I'm going to... Keep using uh, this brush, I think, and I might use my cat's tongue. So we're going to stay here. I'm not getting into any brights. I could, but not yet. So I have a bunch of wonderful white fur and black, and I need some control over what I'm doing. I'm going to take my white and my cad yellow. And a little of uh, cad red and a little of that yellow kind of get in there. It makes sort of a really bizarre almost looking flesh tone, but a pretty good cow nose color. And we're going to do what's called blocking in. So we're going to paint the zones of color on our cow as we're seeing them. And we're not going to be painting the details as of yet. This is just the start. So the black and white areas and the areas that might be a little more pink, you know, and that means I might come back with, and do spots a little later, mm -hmm. right? Cause spots wouldn't be that necessary right now. I'm gonna put this along his little, little mouth there. And I can come forward and weirdly, I'm gonna add some brown into this mix and that's the base I'm gonna do for the fur. 
So the fur now is a little of my cad red, a little of my cad yellow, and my burnt sienna and white. A little of my cad yellow, my cad red, my burnt sienna, and my white. Kind of start to get that dusty beigey, mm. you know. And along the edge of the cow, I'm going to flick my brush, and that's going to give me a little bit of a fun, fluffy fur feeling. See how that is? I do. It's looking very cowy. And that's and that's what it should. It should look cowy, not owie, but cowy. <laughs> And we're going to paint all the areas that are white with this sort of neutral color. Come along the back here because the back kind of is a little white too. My cow is a little fluffier than maybe. This guy. It's winter cow. This cow is winter cow. Mm. Cow is in winter. And you don't have to be for this particular stage of the painting uh, really, really neat or tidy. We're going to be doing layers. And no. you've got to cover the green up. So this light color is going to help you do that really well. If you could, if you only found an 8 by 10 and not an 8 by 8 I would just add more sunflowers. Either more sunflowers on the top of the bottom or more cow butt and a little more cow ear. Yeah. But you could, you know. You can absolutely uh, wing it. Wing it, yeah. That is buy a, a doable thing. Buy an ear and a horn, you'll get it. <laughs> true that. Or an ear and a true tail. True that, right, my friends? True that. Just brushing that down there. We're just coming along. And again, it's beige. It's very streaky and should be. A little bit of a white stripe right there. And because we're bringing a bunch of sunflowers up, you can paint the paint down some into the field so that it can peek out between the leaves. Peek. Peeky, no. peeky. But again, as you can see, the I have professional paint, and even so, there's a little bit of the green and streakiness. By doing it this way, not only do we get a nice undertone for our coat, to really capture uh, the warmth of her white fur, but also we cover these dark values that we don't necessarily want. Now I'm gonna bring this around in a little swirl. And yeah, you know, we're not really gonna see it yet, but we wanna kinda get that sense of that right there. And then we'll play with it much more. We'll pull the white of the bridge of the face away from the nose as needed. Ooh. And then bring this down. Pretty okay. So we have a green and white cow, not the direction we were going. I'm sure it is no surprise that we're going to take a little brown over to our black and paint in the black areas of the cow. It is an unusual color of cow. Yes, it's green and it would be cute blue and white cow. Or strawberry cow would be really cute right now. I have to wonder, where's this cow been? <laughs> What's it been getting into? Looks like the sunflowers. <laughs> I think the picture answers, what has the cow been getting into? The good stuff. This is like cow heaven right here, I imagine. This cow was like, I don't know how I found this particularly yummy bit, but I really, really love the yummy bit. Hmm. Just bring these little bits around so that we can see the markings. Not going to worry about the eyes yet, but we do want to paint around them fairly well. Just getting them kind of framed in a little. Yeah. You called it something earlier. What was that? 
The what? What, what, what you're doing? Blocking you're in. Blocking. There's that word. Yeah, blocking it in. That doesn't need to be that down. So I'll just even grab some of that nose right there because it's okay. Look at this. Like so if you mess up at this point, it, you can just paint it over and go again? Yeah, just because these are all sort of similar colors and we can block in this way. So this is one where you can paint over even before maybe it's fully dry. It was yeah. pretty dry, but you could. I'm taking my burnt sienna and my black. Now, of course, like in the mouth, pretty dark. We might as well capture that right now. I'll bring a little dark line there. I know I've got the sunflower, but why not, you know? Uh-huh. Just painting in that ear. Yeah. The cow. Now here I can kind of flick some of this out a little bit like it's hair coming out. And then the horn can just be... Um, a little bit of the brown and gray and white. And we'll define the curve of that, that fabulous curve of this horn with a highlight and shadow. So for right now, you just want to get that kind of burnt sienna, Mars black, and white in. Oh. Go back and finish the rest of the spots, and we will have finished this step because we will have blocked in the cow. Hmm. That is always fun for us and the cow. This was great. All right. I can even, if I want to hold the place, my place on the eyes, I can take that gray color just as I'm painting the black and hold my place. You know, I know I'm going to be coming back with uh, more details and more highlights and everything. All right. Step is step. I dry it. Mmm. You ready? Oh, no. Let me get back over here for the button. She's going to dry that. I was over here trying to. Figure out, there's a question being asked in here. It's a technical question. If you guys have any kind of question about what we're doing and we can't get to it during the show, feel free to go post in our Facebook group because sometimes it's really hard to get a clear understanding of what someone may be as asking. So sometimes there's, there's hesitation to answer the question. It may just be that we don't necessarily understand what you're asking sometimes. So any of the technical stuff, feel free to post that up on the Facebook group or support at theartsherpa.com or any of those kind of places and we will do our best to try to make sure we get those questions answered. Yes, yes, yes. And in the meantime, we're going to cow it. Cow, moo cow. Step six, moo cow. Oh now, moo cow. So uh, when we come back, <laughs> seems like he just was like, tell them what they're going to do. So when we come back, we're going to continue to paint on Moo Cow and define and highlight the layers and areas. Have Create that knowledge, woman. I have to I'll do something. We teach art here. No, we do. Um, so now we're going to come in and we're going to take our very kind of crazy looking underpainted cow and turn him into or her into a, a very uh, handsome cow mm. and some attractive cow. So I'm going to take a little yellow over to that brown-black mix. I have yellow, and I'm going to add some more white to it. And come along this part of the horn to this outside edge. I'm going to bring down a little bit of a stroke. And I'm letting the edges of my 
bristles kind of flare out. And that's going to help it make it look like maybe a horn or bone or nail or something as they have on this edge. And then right here, and then bring in the highlight there. And that's going to help bend the horn. You should pick that up. No! <laughs> it will stay where gravity put it. Gravity knows what it's doing. That's right. And bring a little bit of a of highlight here. And we're just dry brushing, which means my brush isn't that wet. I'm kind of highlighting over the horn. I can always get into a darker color so I can come into the black if I want to. Even more black. And, uh, play with the horns. starts to come in pretty quickly. A lot of times these things will come together and get more like black hair and kind of on the underside. And then where I need a highlight, get right into my highlight. Just dance back and forth as you need to until you get the result you want. I want a darker color, I'll go darker. It'd be nice to kind of ombre the little tip here. Oh, the horns. Yeah, the horns will come together. Just add a little shadow right here into the horn. This is a useful study if you're going to do a Hellboy painting. This is a very useful study if you're going to paint Hellboy. Study of horns. Of course, his were uh, ground off, so you'd need horns that were ground off to really Wait, do that They study. keep regrowing. Yeah, but they only show them, like, in the apocalypse moments. He, he's never just getting to sport his horns, you know, as he would want to. Oh, you know, I would think they would get in the way. I would be annoyed walking through doors. I mean, I can't walk in with my basement without hitting my head on something. I can't imagine if I had... Three foot of horn sticking off the top of my head. That'd be kind of. A little bit of a white highlight here. It'd be a great center at basketball. So what we're doing is we're just really creating um, this wonderful uh, scent of horns. And then we're going to create a very light gray. Come along this outside edge, feather that in, make that rough like a horn would be. There we go, some little light horns. They are there. There are the horns. And we're going to continue with those colors around the fur. What? I know. So I'm going to make a lighter value. And again, it's the burnt sienna, Mars black, titanium white, sometimes with a little bit of yellow if it's more in the sun or it's running more towards the yellow. And we're going to come right here over the top with little strokes that imply the fur. In the, the corner of his little head here, he's got a little bit of a cowlick going. <laughs> no pun intended. Mm -hmm. He does. So we definitely want to kind of show that off. So people are like, I wonder why the cow is eating the sunflower. Like, why does it like sunflower seeds? I, chomp, I would chomp, think chomp, it's chomp. yummy. Mm, delicious. I mean, I eat sunflower seeds. seeds. It probably doesn't. It probably is just like, you know what? Those yellow parts just add some flavor. Some flavors. I'd be willing to bet that if you went out there and just chewed on one, <laughs> all of the parts would taste good. All the parts? I get maybe a find... darker brown over here on the side of the face because that might be a little more in shadow. Mm. Maybe a little bit. Feather in. Yep, Heather's like, cows like the whole thing. They like the whole thing? Yeah. That's good to know. Come around here, and you have almost a V in to that mouth, and then we can be a little more even into the gray-white coming down because 
the cow is in the flower, so it'd be a little more in the shadow. They feel the garnish is delicious and will eat the parsley with the steak. <laughs> Wait, like, ooh. steak, no! So I was like, that eat just seems chicken. like not a... <laughs> Not a cow appropriate comment there, but that was okay. an ins- I was being it's cow, cow insensitive. insensitive. I'm gonna come over into that cad red mixture I had from earlier, but I'm still keeping this value quite light. We're gonna come up down the bridge of the nose with just a slightly it's just much lighter. My brush stroke follows the fur. And I can come in and then like up here at a highlight. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the highlights on the fur. I'm putting a little highlight around the cowlick a few places just to accentuate it and making sure that there's a shadow that is there. And then uh, got a little highlight right here. Interesting. In his little dowlies. Hmm. So farmers harvest the sunflowers and let cows and eat to eat the stalks. Yeah. But this farmer was like, you can have some Maybe cows. he was like, we've got all the flowers we need. Have fun, cows. <laughs> cows like, oh, maybe I'll help myself to this field. <laughs> or it could, yeah, that could have been it too. Like one of those like little moments where the cow's like, I got this. <laughs> Free, I'm in the field. You can't stop me. And underneath the ear here. And perhaps down a little bit. Cow's like, social distancing, farmer. Stay back, six feet. I'm eating. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a world we live in. Back into that peach color that I had before. Maybe a little more brown into it. Cows have hair, not fur. They're hairy, not furry. Ah! I didn't know that, but I thought that hair kept growing. I have to tell you, I can tell you how to paint the cow, but I couldn't tell you how to feed the huh. cow. Or See, I, thought I never I... had a cow. I had horses, but I did not have a cow. See, I thought fur grew to a certain length and then stopped and then hair just keeps going so if you had a hairy sure cow it'd be there. like dreadlock cow, dreadlock cow. <laughs> i so i mean that's what a happens a little more to, white i'm trying to get a lighter value dreadlock cow well, keep that's going what happens to dogs like what if you have a hairy dog and you don't groom it it turns into dreadlock dog <laughs> it does they just play little mats i think they just turn into mats if it was dreads they're like those little uh mop dogs at the westminster show well those are properly knitted Dreads. <laughs> Those are like really amazing dogs. I learned that there were many different theories of dreads. There are the individual dreads. There's the big lumpo dread. <laughs> there's the, there's like, I was like. Highlight right here. So anyway, cows are apparently hairy. Hairy cow. Didn't this know. is a hairy lesson. It is. I wonder if that means they're So hypo- we've just created highlights where more of the sunlight would be on him, but we've left this a little bit dark because, you know, it got dirty. And then as I come down the side, we can get more into the black and kind of shade this, you know, because maybe it wouldn't be as much in the sunlight. And so the, the little sunflowers are putting it in shade and shadow. So it's just a little bit off the white. I can bring all this in around the ear because I know I can come back with the ear. Right. I can come back with this ear with that. Ah, maybe it's in livestock they call it hair, not fur. Grab a little cat right into that. Isn't that amazing? Making that little shoulder show. Livestock, huh? And then brush it back over. Quite nice. Highland cows get long hair to the ground. They do. I guess cold, so there's reason. See a Texas longhorn? They have like super short hair. Do they? I'm getting a little more of the cat right here. I'm just coming in and making sure that he's got some little bits. Some cowy bits. Some cowy bits. And then a little bit of white right here on this outer edge of the jowl. <laughs> right there. Trying to think of all the places he could have a little bit of white on his little jowl. And then across this side, just a little more highlight. (laughs) 
and dry brush just a bit and blend that down. And we'll say that that is that step. That is the white fur. No, it must be black fur. So we did horns and white fur, and now we're going to come back and do the black fur, and then we'll finish with nose and eyes. You know what I'm shocked at? Hmm. The number of cow people we have. <gasps> You Discuss. guys are going to love, uh, so after Acrylic April, which is a story of water, um, we're going to come back and we're going to have several cow uh, theme things. So we're going to have, uh, if you guys are in the patronage, you got to see some of the doodles. Uh, sometimes I show my patronage like concept sketches or ideas that I'm working on um, or, you know, kind of give them peeks into what's going on. No. And, and sometimes they get to see the lessons early. No, when I say cow people, I don't mean just fans of cows. Hmm. I mean, like, they milk cows, they have cows on their farm, they grow the cows. They I was, for a minute, cows. I thought you were talking about, like, a subset of the furry community. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new type of... <laughs> I'm sure that's a thing, and if that's you, the the laughing is in our marital misunderstanding. <laughs> I don't, I don't, but, yeah, for, I thought you were going full furry well, on me. See, that, that brings the more philosophical question of what is a moo cow? It's any cow that I see along the side of the road. You've been married to me for a long time. You know exactly. Goes moo. So we travel <laughs> a lot. This and cows. I'm obsessed with cows when we travel. And whenever I see them, I scream. <clears throat> I'm like, there's cows, there's cows. Like, I've never seen a cow. There's cows, there's cows. And then I like to moo at the cow. I'm like, moo cow. And I like to talk to the cow and see if I can get the cows to look at me. From inside the car. At From inside the car. I'm sure every cow is like, this lady. No, but so like, we're going to come through with some black now. you got to roll the windows down. Come through some black and do some highlights what's, what's here. What's funny is when she's, she does, she's screaming out the window, Moo cows! I love cows, and I want to talk to them, and I don't own any. So that's how that happens. So this is a pretty smooth little area right here, and we'll come under. And this is going to be done with just a few uh, highlights. and well, Not even really highlights, a few g deep grays going to really kind of create this now if we have to we'll get into our Payne's gray actually that might be really nice let's put out some ultramarine blue so we can Payne's gray and again if you did my mix 403 colors you know what I'm talking about so they know about cows like they know all like let's add a little stuff. blue to that <laughs> when we come right here we're going to add a little bit of blue to that mix I know that cows are bigger than me and I don't want to get close to them Oh, I would get close to cow. Feed the cow. And then I like to watch videos. Um, so how I keep my Facebook experience pleasant is I watch animal videos. <laughs> <laughs> and then because I only watch animal videos, it doesn't show me all that. Uh, the only time I see any of that other nasty stuff is like if a friend or family member puts it up in my face. Um, but my choices on Facebook are uh, animal videos, and I love to see cows play. If you've never watched a compilation compilation of cows playing, you haven't lived. Maybe you probably have lived, but it's still pretty wonderful. So this is, I've added ultramarine blue, Mars black, and I'm working these together, and I'm creating kind of a little bit of a, of a space with that. Now I will come along the ear here, and I'm going to flick out. Create a little little edge of, of again, hair. <laughs> now that I've learned a thing. Now that I've learned a thing. So if you want to enjoy Facebook, besides joining my group, the Archerpa Official, or the Acrylic April group if you're doing the Acrylic April Challenge, because we keep those curated and they're always fun. You can also just like, if you only watch animal videos, that's all Facebook will tell you. You can make the algorithm work for you. You can mm. trick Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, he's still tracking all your data, but <laughs> you can mess up the targeted ads. <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> which I do do. <laughs> I'm going to continue to. Did you want to know any of this? Probably not, but I told you. So you're making little... Little fur well, marks, little flicking fur marks into flicking. the black. That's what I was looking for. Flicking, so, flicking, flicking, is and it that's helping. A dry or a wet brush? It's a me. It's medium dry. It's got enough moisture in it. Like I, I am dipping in water, but you know, it does seem to. Uh, it has. Uh, it's drier than wet. Now, if you. I'm gonna come here. I've taken a little bit. Sorry. 
Go ahead, Nova. Oh, well, I was just going to say I added a little bit of white into my black and blue mix, made a, a um, bluish gray that's a little bit lighter. Uh, I'm going to come over to the camera so you can see that blue a little better. It's it's a subtle change, but we've got to put that there. If you were struggling with fur, mm -hmm. do you have any other videos on it? I have a whole playlist about fur. I got fur with Liquitex Basics paint. I got fur with every kind of brush. I have hyper-realistic fur. I have stylized fur. I have blue and purple fur. I have short fur videos and long fur videos. Mm. And there will be more fur videos in the future. So subscribe, hit, hit like, comment, and subscribe because if you want to have more videos that target fur as a subject, follow this channel. Um, in May, we're re we're gonna at some point in May, I think reboot the big art quest, and so you'll be seeing that kind of stuff. I'm gonna add a little bit of that gray highlight right there, and these are subtle little highlights, but on black on black hair, it can really help you see those details on the animal. Get a little bit of the white, and then a little blue black. And come again, a little bit above the eye, maybe a little bit below the eye, and another little, just one less bit there, and maybe another, what? What's the show with Murder Brown? <gasps> Father Brown. Fa is that what it's called? Yes, Father Brown. It's actually called we Father We call it Murder Brown, because who lives in a village where that many people died? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's idyllic, but not because everybody's dying. Yeah. Here, there's something in the well water. They need to look for, for lead or something. Was that a BBC show? It is a BBC show, a C show and there's like a bazillion episodes. And uh, I love watching it. And I, I love Father Brown. He's just like one of my, if you like mysteries, if you like mysteries, he's really rather delightful. And the sets are incredible, and the costumes are incredible. It's, and they have a really good cast. I'm going to come up here with some more black above the eye. It'd be like, you know, the, remember Murder, She Wrote? Mm -hmm. Don't follow that lady. Oh, my gosh. Like, stay away from her. Like, wherever she goes, death is imminent. So, yeah, it's a problem. Something clearly has gone wrong. Same thing with, like, Father Brown. He ends always up in, the, like, the worst situations. I'm a little blue. I'm like. Well, I in that he is at he is being the father to his parish. Like, is that the correct term for it? John's yeah. Catholic. He's so Catholic. he's the father. Well, was Catholic. Are you Catholic? I don't know. So, I don't know. <laughs> like, if you could un-Catholic. <laughs> That's I, what I thought. Can you? I don't know. I don't I know the rules once around you've it. Ben, you've always are until the church says you're, you're not. Out. Right. So That's I why I was unsure. I haven't been booted, but I haven't been back in a while. I think they call me lapsed in, in That's hopes. That's it. That's what it is. In hopes I come back. <laughs> His mother somewhere is like going, ah! <laughs> not somewhere upstairs, actually. Not somewhere <laughs> specifically upstairs. She forgives us and loves us anyways. And makes sure we still get to enjoy Easter. All so, <laughs> All creatures great and small. Oh, I love all creatures great and small. It's more like all creatures great and small, but with murder. That's true. It's the same thing. Why is it that so I'm making so the gray with the, the ultramarine blue, the Mars black, and the titanium white? Why is there so much murder in the idyllic English countryside? I have no idea. They're bored. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know you that divorce exists. They just they're like King Henry had to cut off their heads, so we will too. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm sorry if I made anybody British mad, but it is true. He cut off a lot of people's heads. I was just Not saying of, he wasn't a good king and just saying he today he would be me too. Look, if let's be honest, if, today Henry the Eighth would be the heck me too. Can yeah, you any, imagine any, that on social media? We're just gonna say for glass house purposes. <laughs> glass house purposes, I'm gonna with keep adding recent gray. leaders in mind. We can throw no rocks at any historical leaders of any country. I, I'm still gonna so do it just, because honestly, he just I mean that's a lot that's a lot of like that's a lot of beheaded women. No, but Henry the Eighth had the best clothes. I understand you're feeling on Henry VIII's clothes. We used to do the historical reenactment, were, and he has a and the armor. And he's the very fond of Henry. And no, my point is, taste. is that, I, but I didn't have a way of saying it. But like, just imagine if like if you took Henry today and made him like Henry, and then like all that stuff happened, that would be one heck of a Me Too campaign. I don't know. 
They'll be on social media. Be- <laughs> and can you imagine the apology video? I'm obsessed with apology videos because I'm like, what is this about? History. And so you can just imagine the apology videos. Well, I was in a very dark place. <laughs> and I don't think I had really thought about how I was impacting other people. But I'm in therapy now. And I think I've really learned from my mistakes. <laughs> Although, I, you would think that by the time you got to number four, there would be like, hey, so there's this dude, Henry, in England. Like, no, 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 no. I, he's got, I got a rumor about this guy. Maybe he would do like the Sharon Osbourne apology video. <laughs> yeah, uh, wait, uh, yeah, wrong. Everyone is wrong. <laughs> Sharon Osbourne, and I've been married to Ozzy, and you, I was just, that's enough. <laughs> How did we get on? I don't know. How did we get on England from? Please don't unsubscribe. It's okay if you have to. I understand. I'm gonna add a highlight of gray above the eye here. Anyone else? I just watch. Yeah. Okay, so I do. I get caught into the online drama. John doesn't. He just watches watch music theory far. videos, and he's like, "Did you know that this is like this rock song?" And and these he found some. Mongolian, a Mongolian cover band that covers. They're not a cover rock. band. They're, a, they're. Uh, but I thought you said they did covers. They did a, a cover oh. of Metallica's. Uh, this is crazy. A couple actually of Metallica songs, but no, they're a they're a Mongolian hard rock band called The Who. But I'm it's add H-U. a little hair above here, so we're just adding a little gray highlight there. See how we're making little smidgy movements? I may be crazy. I, okay, I'm just going to be honest. Can I be honest with you? I you really, just... really love internet drama. It's not a healthy choice that I have made. But the cows. <laughs> it's like the real housewives, but it's happening right now. And then I can update myself. <laughs> like I can be like, what is happening now? Except that I'm on John's account. And he's very serious with his YouTube account. Like, it's very serious. But the kids and I are on it because it's also connected to the YouTube Red. And so... <laughs> We have messed up his algorithm and his recommended stuff. Ah, uh, it is. He's so mad. He's like, you. He's like, I can't find any of my stuff. And they get so excited. He's like, well, at least you're looking up hobbits. I'm going to take a little gray along here. I was very happy to hear. At least she was taking some interest. In hobbits. Isn't his little face coming together beautifully? It's important to know who Tom Bombadil is. Did you want to be serious today? Let's get a little more of our black. I do teach art. Are you, do you feel like you're learning? <laughs> you're learning something. So, yeah. Oh, oh, my gosh. Apology videos are like, I don't want to ever have to do one, so I try to be really nice to everybody. <laughs> but Are we going to be using alizarin crimson in? Uh... No. Not uh, not for the foreseeable 2021. All creatures great and small. All creatures great and small. Edie, it's a good call. All creatures great and small is always worthwhile TV and will never leave you feeling bad. You can trust James Harriet. I got my son sucked into it because, like, my son is an activist for goldfish rights, and I didn't mistake, misspeak there. He's an activist for goldfish rights. <laughs> goldfish rights. And and he had to be put on his own account because he's some very strong feelings if, if fish enthusiasts don't treat their goldfish well. Yes. That's very true. We can't talk about it. And I want some goldfish. I really, really want some goldfish, but I have to figure out how to get approval from him. I'm with Jacqueline. She's living for the 16th century drama. It's so good, right? But, and like, I want to bring it to the forefront. Like, if it was now, if it was now, that would be, like, amazing. <laughs> That's like in today's world, just like King Henry on Instagram. The only what would that safe... be? Would be a lot of food pics, right? So the only safe politics is four hundred year old politics. I don't think do do royal pe- people are they politics or are they are they politics? Oh yeah, they are. Oh yeah, that's definitely because you're politics. born into that. That I mean, like that's well, we we start to call that you know things like. Uh, so, sorry, American. And there's the you know the crown monarchy borders on like well, 
good or bad. Like, you know, your monarch could go either way, and you don't really have a choice on how it goes. And so some monarchs are good and some monarchs are bad. And that's why they overthrew the monarchs and said, we want democracy. So Who that's how overthrew monarchs? We did. The I'm... English, we were like, hey, we're going to America. S screw this king stuff. You know what, though? When you really, oh, my gosh. Like, I know I love Hamilton, too, but I think when you really think about what happened... <laughs> it's politics. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I didn't realize the monarchy was politics. No, it's okay. I mean, like, it's history. History is sometimes politics. But when you get 400 years old... It's not that close to the yeah. best right now. I mean, like, if you're People still People don't wrong, have to, like, lose their minds over it. Yeah. Let's get a little more of our blue-gray. I feel like we're going to come in and we're going to have 500,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's good that you're doing a... I've decided to help all the other YouTubers who are coming up by saying crazy things online and then I make an apology video. I make an apology video. I'm so sorry I wasn't sleeping and I just got the COVID vaccine and then I did a bunch of crazy things and I'm so sorry. You talked about goldfish and now you owe all the goldfish people an apology. You don't know who my son is, so I don't, I just, you don't know what his name okay. is. All right. He's serious. not allowed to say anything mean, but he is allowed to, to, to preach for goldfish rights. Can I ask you something? We're adding some gray fur. Why are here. you putting blue on the black fur? Well, because there's a slight blue cast and blue shift in the black fur, especially with the light. So if you're trying to capture that like blue reflection that you see in black fur or hair, sometimes that's good to cast there. Huh. All right. But I've done that and I and I oh, I think I've I've said crazy. I don't know. Tuesday's so show is a crazy show. I should stop Tuesday's show. Cows be crazy, man. No, it's me. It's they me. Bring the mood. I've been in the house too long, like many of us. <laughs> I've been in the house too long. And now you're like, oh, she is like her mother. I didn't know. Yeah. Just like my mom and I in a room and filter is really quite something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing a little black into here, as you do. Kind of exaggerating maybe that a bit. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to get a little bit into my, my gray and kind of come under here. And I'm uh, not that worried about this side because I'm going to have a big sunflower. So don't get too into what you're uh, painting over here. Don't do that. All right. Because you're going to have to paint a lot of it away. And a little more black. Hmm. Okay. I feel like I have captured all the fur, and he's very fluffy, and I have alienated at least half of my viewers <laughs> who are pro King. Nope. I'm not anti King Henry, and I love Elizabeth. Does that help? I love Elizabeth. Like, love her. Are you stepped? Step me. I've lost Step my mind today. To was, eight. If you're very glad that I took two days off, because if I'd gone on that tired, who knows what I would have said. <laughs> my husband's like, he's like, it's okay, baby, you're fine. Hand gestures. So my husband has this thing where um, he likes to use hand gestures to communicate. And while we are pretty vicious on Pictionary um, and other sort of like, gestural games for some reason i don't understand any of his hand gestures so when he makes like what seem like very clear to him hand gestures i think he's like saying i'm gonna kill you and the dog too <laughs> so I know what he's i'm like what is it bad what okay so let's do the nose all right you're still here right i am somebody is where am i gonna go they, i don't know where you're gonna still, go there's a lot of people still here Oh, me. that's good. They're, they're all definitely crewed in. So I'm taking a little cows. brown and a little bit of, they don't care what I say as long as I paint a cow. You is that, is that kind of yet. like a thing? Huh? You're not being crazy. I don't really say that mean of stuff. But you never know, man. Like sometimes you'll say like something completely innocent and people are like, rage, internet rage. <laughs> You're like, oh, I did not know anyone felt strongly about any of that. <laughs> Just, we do now. But now I do. So I am taking a little burnt sienna, cad red, and titanium white. I'm mixing them over here to get this sort of little mid-gray brown. And we're going to come in and start to sort of shade 
planes of the nose and some darker areas. And you can bring it a little bit right here and maybe some kind of underneath. And as I go, I can get much more white into it and a little more red. That's much more white and red into it, peaching up quite a lot. Let's bring that around here a bit. Let's bring it around a bit for sure. I shade that through there. I feel like I've got to come. There we go. Bring a bit more of a. Bring that nostril down. Oh, bring it down. Still have to add the flower to the mouth. So. Oh yeah, we got a lot to do. We're just some... getting some shading going on here. Some little mouth shading, a little bit along the little nose here, a little dark value. Now I'm gonna plot some red and some white. Now, if you're having I'm trouble, just red and white. Let me pull that mm. picture over a little bit. If you're having trouble, um remembering all of your color combinations do you have a is there a quick reference tool to help you remember colors yes and i it it makes everybody crazy to do it but once you do it you love that you did it which is my color chart the tint tone sh shade color chart which does have a written out explanation in the files but the tint tone shade color chart 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 <laughs> I'm not going to do that on camera because it's just so over. It's been done. It's been played out this week. It's already trended. Um, but it will help you do that. And then you can look at the chart and in a glance know what two colors will get you where and very easily uh, makes make that. And then we also did uh, how I mix my color, which covered a lot of the color mixes as well. And then the mini books we, we talk about, each step lays out what brush I used and what colors I used. So you don't have to take notes. No. And we don't got to worry too much about that far side again because we're going to have a big flower on it. A little more white. A little highlight. Definitely across the top. A little highlight. Across the top and around the kind of outside. And then back into the red, red, red. And then even more into that. I'm trying to do a little cow mouse. And then we're going to add a little red there. Shading that up. Just got to eat some stuff. Now, a real fun thing is we're going to take a little of this red mm -hmm. and our black together. No weird thing, but we're going to make kind of a hidden little tongue that we sort of see in the mouth on this side. This is cute, and you can do it if you want to. You can do it if you want to. Smell your cow and have that there. All right, so we're going to take a little of our black. And it can have some blue in it, but our black. And... Make a little spot. There's some blue and black and white. Make a little spot. Make a little spot. Because cows have little spots on their noses, right? Yeah. If you were painting a cow portrait, this would be really a big deal. These markings. Because that's what makes this cow look different than every other cow, is its spots. So if you ever do anybody's pet portrait of their cow, or their cat, or their dog, this is what you want to really nail. Now I got this. I'm going to bring this in here. Kind of a little bit forward. It's just a touch of it. If I have to get my brush wet to improve the flow, I will. And then a little bit back this way. Just a little bit of a shading just to capture that nostril. This nostril is going to have a lot of flower over it, so don't put too much love or stress or time into that because it's just going to make you 
aggravated as it is, and you don't want to do that since you're painting over most of it. I'm going to uh, add this here and then maybe a little bit along this lip. And I'm going to flick a little bit of this here, kind of flick that fur forward so that the oh, that thing is there. Let's uh, pink that up as well. Now in a minute we're going to do his, uh, I'm going to get some white. There we go. Because he's got a little furry mouth. It's important for later. I'm going to switch to a detail brush. This is a number one art Sherpa detail. All it is is this brush with a very fine point where I do detail. I'm going to take uh, my black and blue together, my black and ultramarine blue. Make sure I don't have a drop of water hidden somewhere on my brush. I'm going to start to paint this eye. I'm going to focus his little eye kind of looking to the far back here. And the same thing is actually uh, happening over here as well. There's quite an expression on this cow's face. And then we're going to get a little white on the brush. It really is. Watch for um, little drops of water hiding up the handle because they can sneak down on you. Kind of looking that way. And you can get a little pink going. As you might have. Yeah. And then I'll definitely thin out some black, some pure black. Oh, that cow's looking around now. He's like, where's the... Where's the... Where's the stuff, right? Where's the farmer? Where's the farmer? Somebody's here. Let's get a little blue and uh, white and black. Add that there and a little of that here as well. The beginning of that reflection in the eye. Now, on the white, I'm going to have some very, I use fluid white, and here's, I always use this. This is the titanium white fluid acrylic. I like this because it's highly pigmented. It's very fluid. It helps me get fine lines, lots of control over my paint. And when I thin out paint, sometimes I can get it to the thin consistency, but not enough pigment. This gives me, and a little Ooh. bit to the top of that eye. There we go. Nice. And there's his little cow face. Isn't he cute? Yeah. He's so cute. Now, just on the touch, just because I think this will make a difference, I'm going to also bring a little bit of this white along the horns. Just so that they carve out in shape and form. Mm, From our background, I'm nice. dotting the line. which means I'm breaking it up. So it's not a firm line, and I'm just making sure that those are showing there. And I'm going to add some dots to the top of the nose with this white paint. Mm. And down a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. How are you guys doing? I know this is a big project but he's just so cute and he's worth painting isn't he and then here along his little mouth curve some little hairs 
in this white paint. You see how we're doing? A little bit of detailing there. Now this is something I'm pretty confident in, getting these little light, fine lines. And you'll notice I have tools and experience. So I have a detail brush, which gives me a fine line. I have fluid paint, which gives me a fine line. And I have a lot of experience doing a fine line. If you don't have the tools and you don't have the experience, take a colored piece of scratch paper to the side and practice your fine lines and make sure you're going to get the results you want. Hmm. All right. That's that step. And now it's time to paint the stuff that's happening in front. All right. Look at this baby. Isn't he pretty? So pretty. A pretty, pretty, pretty cow. Moo cow go pretty. So now we're going to do the stuff that's in front. We're going to paint our sunflowers and the, specifically the one that he's eating. And we're going to exaggerate some of it. We're going to play with it. Um, because at this stage, that's the, those are the chances that, you know, we get to have as an artist is play with the colors and the events that are happening in our painting. Okay. So we kind of remember that if you take the yellow and the orange, you can mix it into the green. You remember from earlier in the painting? Yes. All right. But we're going to want it a little bit brighter. So there was just enough green kind of already here to even kind of get there. So let's exaggerate. Let's take... A nice big half moon here. You can always come in and add a little more yellow and have a highlight white into that. I might want to add the highlight a little bit later. We can let that dry for a second. And you can come here and say maybe up here. Have a downward facing one. And it, there's two. And, you know, we could have them there, but I think that we should separate them up because I feel like that will look better hmm. to space them out. And for the most part, the rest of what's here, right, doesn't really show us the faces, does it? We have a couple of faces here. And this one barely will probably have more petals over it than anything else. So I'm going to take my yellow and my green. And maybe a little of my white. And I'm adding water so that I have a nice flow off of it. And just bring some stems. These are fine lines. Okay. Little stems here and there. Really can nice. thicken this up here. And then this can also. I guess I'll bring that one that way. Kind of like a little candy cane. So that they're just a little bit separated out. Add some stems there. And then we can come in and grab some more green, you know, and maybe add the leaf shapes. Are you uh, still doing those watercolor classes on Wednesdays, Wednesdays? Yes! And we're doing them now on the new YouTube channel as well as on Facebook. Hmm. So if you go to How to Paint Watercolor Live with the Art Sherpa, that's the new channel. 
on Wednesdays it will be there. And then if you still prefer to watch them on Facebook, no worries. They're still on Facebook. Ah. I'm going to add a little downward facing petal there. So, you know, when you're trying to do these leaves, you just sort of look at the overall shape and try to duplicate that shape. I don't want to take that over the ear. So it's dry there, and what I can do is I can erase before uh, the paint dries. Mm. That's the other way to correct in acrylic. And that just got that to erase magic. It just gets it to erase because the reason I'm doing this is that leaf has to, you know, hide behind the ear, doesn't it? Yeah. And we can exaggerate with these anytime we want. I can then get into my white paint and make a very, very light color. Actually, I'm going to switch to my detail brush just to make life easier for myself. Hmm. Sometimes it will. On the stem, just to have this very, very light color because the stems have these very, very light colors. And I'm leaving the dark outer edges of this. Oh, those flowers. A little stem in. That's pretty fun and nice. Now I can bring in a little white in the yellow that we talked about earlier and kind of maybe highlight the fronts of these just a bit. It will oh, peek out yeah. from behind the leaves, but you got to do what you can do. I'll take my number four round in my green and my yellow. My number four round, my green and my yellow, and I'll add some highlights to our leaves in a little sort of touch pull stroke. Oh, yeah. I like those flowers. Add some white to the yellow and green. Add some personality there. Now we're going to grab, I think we should put some yellow kind of over in its own little space. Add some red to it. Orange it just a titch. Now, are you doing anything to load your brush here differently? I am making sure that I put it, 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 so what I always do is I make sure that the tip of my brush carries the paint. Ah. Tip of my brush is carrying this paint. Bring this around a couple of these yellows. Now, a little bit of the head is peeking through, but we have a lot of the yellow covering. And we're going to get really into it, a little more red over to here. We're going to really get into it over here. And I think it's very important, the petal 
I'm going to make sure I have this just really on the tip of my brush. I think that was important. The little yellow petal in his mouth was super important. Little S strokes to bring the petals down. They just have a little bit of a curve to them. You can see there's a lot of the muzzle is just covered up. And was always going to be covered up. Mm. Come back over to my other flowers with some more yellow now that the paint's slightly dry. And make sure that there's a bit of pops of just more yellow. Not every petal, but just a bit here and there. Now on art. Scale of one to three. How difficult? three? This is definitely a three. Three. A lot happening here. Mm. A lot is like it is being broken down, and this will definitely let a lot of two hoop painters hop into a three. The new way we're doing lessons, for sure. But just know you've got some time investment into it. There's a lot of techniques. The paints aren't particularly complicated. The mixes aren't particularly complicated, and even the techniques themselves aren't complicated. But there's just a lot we're doing. And whenever we're doing a lot, we should always kind of honor that and respect that and know it. And I'm going to add a little brown into my green and yellow. And we have to make sure that we manage our expectations in the painting. Mm. So I'm bringing these around here. This is kind of that green crown. And you want to make sure that you have, you know, lots and lots and lots. So you can go into the yellow and green with the white, yellow, green, and white. Get a really light color of yellow, green, and white. Make sure you have a nice browning there. And we can come here and I'll start with my kind of deep green. I'm going to come to the back of my flower. Whoops. With my deep Shh. green over here. And then I'm going to work through my brighter greens. Kind of speak to the back of the crown of the flower. There we go. And it might be a good idea to, you know, maybe... I'm going to put a little leaf in front of there. Kind of hint at a stem going down, even though really it's going to be covered by everything. Mm -hmm. And let's call that a step, and then we'll finish out the rest of the flowers in the last one. Yeah. Yeah, because that was a lot to get. These flowers were super important. You know, you want to capture those really well so that the rest of the flowers kind of come into place because they're sort of like really fun little yellow bits of fluff with green backs and we just kind of capture the shape and flow and directionality of them but with those uh main flowers around him you wanted to have a little bit of focus and and define dimensions so that your mind sees the flowers in the overall composition all right i'll stay with my number four round but i am going to change my water again just to make sure that my painting is bright and I'm going to sip some water that my paint hasn't gone into. Mm. Sorry for listening to my drinking noises. <laughs> no, you didn't, didn't pick up. Oh, no, up. not at all. They're like, no, no, we don't let them listen to your drinking noises. I'm going to put out a little more yellow over by my red. And that's because I will want some of those uh, brighter colors. And I'm going to be playful and cheerful with the rest of this. Not that I haven't been playful and cheerful all along. I just want to make sure that I'm taking my cad red and my cad yellow and I'm mixing them together on my number four round. Let's paint some sunflowers all over the place. You know, if you think that, like, I sometimes when I want to know where something is, I'll dot, make a little dot of line so that I can see where I'm going. Mm. Mm 
And I'll put little petals here and there. Little petals here and there? Yeah, I will. I'll put little petals here and there. Kind of speak to... Maybe different ones sort of hinting here or hinting there in grass or being blocked off by other flowers. Mm. Again, we're kind of in a very light orange. And the reason we like to get into a light orange is that will let us really curve these into the shape of this one. That will let us layer, it will let us give highlights and uh, some unexpected dimensionality, some of these little flowers in the front of the field. I mean, in art, all we're really painting is the illusion of objects in the world. Or maybe we tell truth, as some people say, or artists tell the truth. Some people say artists, you know, are deceivers because they create illusion. I think that we find what's important in a moment, what matters, and we focus in on it. And so maybe we do tell a little more truth than even life can do. It's important, I think, to make sure that there's bits of yellow that will peek out of the green here and there. Keep it orange if you can. Not super orange, but just orange enough to these are little downward arcs. Little touch pulling back stroke. Because again, some things will be down in the leaves, mm. not really even visible to us. Now we're going to get into our greens. And I'll start out with a little bit of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green. and hint at the crowns that are maybe behind these flowers. But not just that, also the leaves that are here and there. These are the deep, deeper dark leaves. And, th and this is why we went to the trouble to kind of create that very uh, camouflage little background. This is my burnt sienna and my come here and be like, yeah, you could have some right there. Just starting it, starting to pull the burnt sienna and the phthalo green through. Just saying, hey, there's a you start with the deep green. And you'll see that we're breaking up that line along uh Mr. Cow Pants or Mrs. Cow Pants. I don't know the cow that well, so
Where's your cow? It's all good. I'm not here. You can see these little strokes are just sort of imply maybe a loose little area of leaves. You know, and while we're here, we can take a little bit of this green. Hold on a second. Sorry. You're going to see some things blinking over there, Cinnamon. Okay. Is everything okay? Should I stop working? No, you're fine. Okay. So I'm adding a little white to my light green mix. And we're doing that so we can put a few, few stems. little bit here and there, little light stems. A few of those. Mm -hmm. Just hidden in there. And get some very bright yellow and green. And start to make not only interesting crowns of the tops of the flowers, but also to talk about little leaves that could be, you know, different colors of them, right? Different grains. Wow. Just sort of like we did when we made the camouflage, we're painting little variants. If I put a leaf here and there, I, I, the trick is, guys, is not to paint out everything you did, right? Sometimes it's easy to put in a thing and then just paint out everything you did. Oh. And I'll just take those mini micro mixes of greens. Yeah. The no, mini mixes is of green. And and so if you're having trouble with the micro mixes, right? Because we we paint paint here, um, and so that is a lot of painting. Is you're getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You lighten with yellow, you darken with green, you lighten with white, you darken with brown. Like you're playing through that. Definitely watch the 403 color video or make the color chart because what you'll realize is that once you understand how your greens lighten and darken, mm -hmm. you understand the mixes as you're seeing them. So if I'm getting a little more yellow maybe in one grouping, and then I come and get a little more green in another, you'll be like, oh, I see what she's doing. And those different levels of green and depths of green do create a sense of this field being very full. Huh. You know, and you make little defined brush strokes and... Rinse that all out. Rinse it out, out, out. All the way out. And we're going to come into the yellow. And let's add a little white to our yellow. Not much, though. We're lightening it a smidge, but we really want it to be yellow. And we're going to load it on the toe of our brush. Oh, and a couple yeah. of petals you're going to pick and... Uh, You know, maybe highlight. Just bring them into focus. Wow, that's fantastic. Not every pet, just some. Maybe some or more. Mm hmm. And others are less. You know, that's really. If 
up to you as you paint. Now this weekend where we do the fence and the flowers, that's going to be much more in the uh, one or two hoot range. And that's just because there's less techniques to be concerned about. And, you know, we're working the 16 by 20, so like a little bigger area to kind of work it out. But isn't this just exactly what you hope the painting mm, would be? That cow is having a good time. Oh, that turned out so nice. Still, cows enjoying some flowers. Remember, you can come through, you can just, you know, you can come through with color and like anything more. Mm -hmm. Anything can be more. Take the time and. There she is. That's amazing. Isn't she happy? Luffy, lovely, and you painted her. And if you need that extra help, you know, wait for the mini book. They'll be out pretty quickly. And, mm -hmm. you know, then you can paint along with that step-by-step -step help. In if no you time. just need the chapters, we're going to have that done pretty soon after the video. And we're working to make that something that's done before a video. Yep. So fingers crossed. Right? You'll have these things before a video. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. Yeah, sign it now. I'm going to sign it. I'm taking a little bit of yellow and my titanium white, and I'm putting it on my brush. And I'm going to just put my little moniker on here. I like to use colors that I used in the painting that aren't going to just completely pull the painting apart compositionally. You know, um... Your name's important. I would just, for me, my name's not the most important part of the painting. The cow is. So I like to have it there. Somebody knows who did it, but I don't want to have it take over the whole thing. Mm. And that is how I would paint in acrylic a cow eating sunflowers, a goofy cow. And we have another one hoot goofy cow coming up in May. So you're going to love her. She's going to be a little more graphic on a 16 by 20. You can find her real fun. Wednesday, uh, you know, how to paint watercolor live with the art sherpa channel we'll have the live stream and so if you weren't in if you weren't watching them on facebook but you wanted to see them we'll have them in both places now cool oh i have a butterfly and it's just loose in my hair Your butterflies just, just, just the thing so uh sorry for my weirdness <laughs> i hope i didn't upset any fans of Harry. Oh, no, we're all good here, I think. Everyone's enjoyed the show. We had <sighs> we talked about BBC shows. We talked about oh, BBC. cows. It's everything BBC. Well, not everything BBC. The the version of the CSI thing with the dun-dun, your version, not as much. But they <laughs> seem to be doing a good It's an interrogation with, room. <laughs> they do a good job with Doctor Who. Doctor Who is the... Never stop. I thought you were going to. Father Brown, All Things Great and Small, oh, so the Mighty Boosh. Many, many. The many, many. Many, many Mighty Booshes. Very good. I like it. He does. He makes me watch it a lot. So okay. enjoy your lives. Enjoy TV. Enjoy your painting. I would love to see your version so you can share your version of the cow with me in our Art Sherpa official group. You can share this with me on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, just uh, on our website and Pinterest. Lots of places. All right. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.